Time stocks are hitting their best levels in about a month. Uh, as Sarah says, a make or break week ahead as investors get ready for the Fed to cut rates potentially. Our next guest is, though, cautious for the rest of the year. Joining us here at Post 9 is Daryl Kronk, a Wells Fargo CIO for Wealth and Investment Management, target of 5,200. Daryl, good to have you. Thanks, Carl. W why the caution? Um, we just think we've front end loaded a lot of the gains for this year. We do think the Fed has to get going if, if you know, they should have went in July, in our opinion. Um, they didn't, right? So now the question about 50 versus versus 25. Real rates are too high. In fact, if you look at real rates as inflation has come down, they're at the highest point in this Fed tightening cycle that they've been, which are grinding on the consumer, which is what you were talking about before. And the neutral rate, you can debate where our start is in the neutral rate. Let's say it's three. If they come down 125 basis points this year, you're still at four to four and a quarter you're still 100 to 125 basis points above the neutral rate. And there's just no reason for them to wait. So we think the delay, right, the risk here is they're transitory on both sides. <laughs> they were transitory too late on inflation. Now they're going to be transitory and too late on the growth slowdown that's happening live as we speak. So you think this is going to start to get reflected in earnings? I do think it's going to start getting reflected in earnings. We already see um, Q3 numbers coming down to the lower end of their range, right? You've got five of the 11 gig sectors sitting on the lower end of the range. Think about this. Just juxtapose these two things. Show me a time in history where you've gotten 10 plus Fed rate cuts and earnings have grown 15 percent the following year. Those two things just don't coincide. Something's going to have to give there one way or the other. Either you're going to get the earnings growth, of which you don't need 10-plus interest rate cuts, or you're not going to get the earnings growth, and they're going to have to start cutting. Isn't it your suspicion, though, that we, we don't get the 10, kind of like we didn't get the 6 in January for the year? Yes. I, I, think, I think we've, you know, the, the bond market has tried all the way along here to jawbone the Fed into getting what they want. The reality is, as we sit here this morning, though, the three-month to two-year, not the two to ten-year, but the three-month to two-year is 135 to 140 basis points inverted still, right? So the short side of the yield curve, which is more signal than noise, the long side's more noise than signal, is telling you the Fed's behind the curve right now. So playbook then looks like what? You go ultra defensive or? No, I, I think you can still stay with equities, but, but you're seeing the rotation into more defensive sectors. It's clear, right? I mean, if you take just simply consumer discretionary, which has lagged for some time on a technical and a, and a relative basis, and now tech is starting to lag on a technical and relative basis as well, those pro cyclicals, minus some of your energy and industrial and those type of places, are really starting to tell you that things are slowing down quickly. Go back to the labor market conversation, right? I mean, the last three months, non-farm payrolls are 116,000 new jobs, right? We know labor is a lagging indicator. The year is 204. Last year was 251. 2022 was 377, right? You can see the, the breadth of that slowdown happening in real time right in front of your eyes. So it sounds like you think earnings expectations are too high. They are too Not high. Not Fed expectations. So where are they too high in particular? In the cyclicals? Yes. Uh, they're too high, particularly in the top end loaded tech side of things, we think. So you're going to come in probably this year, Sarah, around 243, 245. Next year's expectations are 270, right, which gives you the 15 percent growth. That has to come down. We think that number probably needs to be lower than where it is today. But but did you see this chart I showed of Goldman Sachs? Like the cuttings usually happens into recession, so that makes sense. But if it happens into normalization and soft landing, then why can't you get earnings growth with Fed cuts? Oh, let's be clear. You can get earnings growth. I, we just think it's not 15 percent, right? It's 15 uh, percent is a year like we haven't seen in many, many years. So the idea that you're just going to get that in a world where margins are actually starting to roll over, if you look at operating margins, they're actually starting to roll to the, to the negative side. Stocks will treat you well when operating margins are expanding. When they're declining, they won't treat you well historically. Right, which is why we're you know, sort of uh, gazing to see if we start to see restructurings, headcount as corporates try to preserve some of those margins. I guess the only thing I would add is Atlanta Fed's still tracking Q325. That's right. And I think what B of A23, I don't know what you're tracking is for, for the quarter. We think it's probably just under two, but it's still, it's still a healthy quarter, right? We're about ready to shut it down. I just think you need to watch the real time slowdown in what's actually happening. I mean, so again, consumer expectations came in good this morning. Think about think about what's happening. You know, we've got 21 of 22 months in a row where manufacturing's been below 50 in contraction, right? You've had 29 months in a row where LEIs are still declining, right? Which we talk about LEIs and the false positive it sends, right? But recession risk 
we don't think is the base case, but recession risk is about the data you want to look at, right? And that's, to Sarah's earlier point, that's what makes this cycle so confounding and confusing, right? Is that you can find the narrative and the story wherever you want to find it, right? I think the important thing is watching the data in real time and what's happening. And remember, labor is a lagging indicator. It's not a coincidence indicator. It's not a leading indicator, right? So be careful, even though that's- Jobless claims, look. though, are not lagging indicators, and they look good. Jobless claims have been flat for 15 weeks in a row. I mean, essentially flat, the, minus a, a thousand. But the four week jobs. average is, is lower than it was in the summer. <laughs> yes. And we know some of that skewed by immigration right. and all that other stuff. So, again, I think you need to watch what companies are saying, right? They're your best real time indicator. And they're telling you they need to start thinking about reducing expenses. They need to start probably laying off workers, right? Because they're just not seeing the topside demand growth that they want to see and the pricing power that they had and enjoyed over the last couple of years. That's a good uh, primer for viewers ahead of next week, Daryl. Thank you. Good My to pleasure. see you, Daryl Kronk. Too.